All right, guys, we are going to assemble a brand new snowblower. This is how it came out of the box. <coughs> Pardon me. The bottom of the box was open, and the and the snowblower was on a little wooden frame. So it, once we just tilted the box a bit, we just lifted the box over the top of the whole works and got rid of the the what would it be three quarter by two wooden frame it was on. So this is it. This is exactly how it came off the frame. So. We'll just get started and I'll quickly read the instructions as we go. And uh, its I don't think it's going to be that bad. So number one, place the lever in, shift lever in position number six. And it already is, I think. Yes. So that's just the shift, the shift lever right there. Right there in gear six. Then, it says, as you're lifting up on the handle, make sure that the two cables, this cable right here and this cable right here, don't come out of the pulley. And they're good. And you just lift up. And it says to tighten these wing nuts. I'll this one first so it stays there. Of course, I picked the hard one with the cable harness. There we go. There we go. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay. Now, I'm just going to check these shift cables. Alright, see that? maximum setting. So the next thing is <clears throat> remove wing nut and hex screw from chute control assembly and the clevis pin and cotter from the chute support. Okay, well I had a look at this. I didn't know what they were talking about at first. But here we have the chute control. This cotter pin came in the bag. Don't know what that's for yet. Came with two extra shear pins. So right here on the chute, there's two nuts, one here and one here. And this one has a removable wing nut. And over here, I'll just show you this. I don't like this pin. There we go. Oh. Why can't they just use a regular clevis pin? So now I think that at the same time this goes on top of the chute here, this lines up. It's a little dark, but this chute cover lines up over there. And there's our little bolt that came through, and we're just going to put that wing nut on there. I hope you guys can see this. Maybe. Okay. And then reinstall the clevis pin with the horizontal pin to the horizontal, the hole to the horizontal. Yeah, I don't like that pin. Goes on good, comes off bad. Okay, so that's that. Right there. And there. So now, uh, let's see what the instructions say. Guide the chute crank rod through the bracket located in the rear of the handle. Remove the cotter pin and insert 
the crank rod into the connector and shoot control assembly. So that's where that cotter pin came in. So I guess we don't need this plastic on here. Okay. So I'm pushing the rod through this hole here. Um, as we'll show you, there's a hole right there. And I'm pushing that through so the rod ends up interfacing right into here. I have to put you down. I'm just lining up the hole in the rod. It's not that hard to do, it's just it moves, wants to move all at once. There we go. There. So with a little bit of luck, the chute should go back and forth. Well that's fun. Good. And that's most of it. Let's just continue reading in the instructions. Check all cables are properly routed through the cable guide on the front side of the sheet, which is just here. So next we're, it came with oil, which is kind of weird, but no gas. So I'm going to just shut you down and go get some fuel and we'll see, to, we'll go to the next step, which is the fire up of the machine. Alright guys, <clears throat> I'm just checking the oil in it and it's perfect. I don't know if you can see that. And I added, oh, I don't know, about 150 milliliters. Not very much, right? Just to take it up to the top. Just thought I'd show you that. It looks like all of the uh, pivot points have been greased with lithium grease. So now I'm going to uh, continue on with the startup procedure. So I'll be back in just one little bit. Well, here's an interesting tidbit. I was just reading through the manual, and uh, it said that the tires come over inflated, and and to read the recommendation on the side of the tire, and it says 14 pounds. So let's just see what we got. How about zero? <laughs> side will be the same or we've got a bad tire. You don't have to see this, you just saw it. Okay, 14. That's interesting.
So just to recap, to do this job, uh, really all you need is a pair of pliers for the cotter pins and uh, a compressor to put some air in the tires. And they're at 14 pounds. I mean, I put a very small amount of oil in it to get it up to the top of the full mark, but uh, that's it. And I just did a little bit of lithium greasing, like here. And a few of the rotation points, like, like in there. So that's about it, guys. That was kind of fun. Now we're just going to fire it up. All right, I think it's time to fire this guy up. It comes with a, a short extension cord, starting with the AC. But I just plug my extension cord into here and it fit just fine. So let's see if this puppy goes. He is on, three quarters throttle, a little bit of priming. Choke is on. I'll just show you all that. Okay. So here we are. That's the primer button. That's the choke. Choke on. Choke off. And whenever I'm starting a motor, whatever, I go to three quarter throttle. And it should go. We're in F1 or neutral. And uh, we should be rocking and rolling. This is kind of fun, guys. Let me set you over to the side so you don't get the glare. Key out to turn it off. Well, it was kind of anticlimactic, wasn't it? So I'm just going to make sure that all it has all six gears, and that's a wrap. <laughs>